Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to the channel where we bring you Christian commentary about the things that matter. As ever, please know this video isn't a sinful attack, but rather a biblical critique. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Kevin Max, former member of Christian band DC Talk. Now, DC Talk was the band who made the popular song Jesus Freak. If you don't know them from anything else, that's how you might know them. Toby Mack was another member of this band, maybe you've heard of him, and Michael Tate is a current lead singer of the Newsboys. He was also a member of DC Talk. In its heyday, this was a very popular Christian band, like I said. But one of the members of DC Talk, the lesser known member, Kevin Max, he has strayed from biblical values in recent years and in virtually every way. He is now defending the pro-choice and pro-LGBT positions and is just all around anti-Christian values. Of course, we should should all pray that he would repent and turn to Christ. But in any case, he recently made a post that we need to take a look at and respond to. This is a very popular perspective in our culture, and it needs to be refuted because it's wrong. Just a disclaimer, for the sake of YouTube's touchy algorithm, instead of a common word that starts with the letter A, I will be using the word baby killing, which carries the same meaning. Let the listener understand what that means. Look at this screenshot here, and let me read it to you. Kevin's caption for the post says this, quote, just a reminder for my Christian friends, end quote. The implication here is that mainline evangelical Christians have strayed from the true values, the progressive nature of Jesus. And the picture says this, quote, Jesus was a radical, nonviolent revolutionary who hung out with lepers and hookers and crooks, wasn't American and never spoke English, was anti-wealth, anti-death penalty, anti-public prayer, Matthew 6, 5, but was never anti-gay, never mentioned baby killing or birth control, never called the poor lazy, never justified torture, never fought for tax cuts for the wealthiest Nazarenes, never asked a leper for a copay, and was a long-haired, brown-skinned, homeless community organizing Middle Eastern Jew, end quote. Now, that was a mouthful. Some of it was correct, but most of it was either blatantly false or represented a half-truth taken out of context. Let me demonstrate. Basically, Kevin Max wants you to think that the ethics of Jesus Christ perfectly match the ethics of modern, woke, politically correct liberals. And this is, of course, blatantly false. Even a surface-level knowledge of the relevant biblical texts would demonstrate that this premise is nonsense. But I fear that in this search for political correctness that Kevin Max and many others are on, they misrepresent Jesus in many notable ways. Let's analyze this statement biblically and correct it wherever necessary, which is in a lot of places. First, he says that Jesus was, quote, a radical, nonviolent revolutionary, end quote. And this is a half-truth at best. Jesus was, for the grand majority of the time, nonviolent, even in the face of his own execution. But Kevin Max seems to forget that in John chapter 2, Jesus cleansed the temple. In verse 15, it says, quote, And making a whip of cords, he, Jesus, drove them all out of the temple, with the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables, end quote. So according to Kevin Max, Jesus was basically a nonviolent hippie, but he seems to have forgotten that nonviolent Jesus once brandished a whip of cords to defend the honor of his father's temple as he forcefully threw tables to the ground. This is not the first time, though, that Kevin Max will be spreading falsehood about the nature of Jesus. The second part says that Jesus, quote, hung around with lepers, hookers, and crooks, end quote. And this is again a half-truth. The implication seems to be that Jesus felt free to hang out with people living in rebellious sin, and I guess, so should you. Of course, this message conveniently removes the purpose for which Jesus ate with sinners. Indeed, the Pharisees in Mark chapter 2 were very angry. They were baffled that he would eat with such people. But Jesus heard them, and his response in Mark 2.17 tells us the whole story. Quote, and when Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. End quote. So Jesus explicitly says why he was eating with them and spending time around them. And it was not because hanging out with sinners is cool or hip. Not because he was susceptible to peer pressure. No, that had nothing to do with it. Jesus explicitly says that he ate with sinners so that he could call them to 
repentance. Because in his own words, they were morally sick. They were diseased people, and they needed his help, lest they die in their sins. In other words, Jesus eating with sinners is not an excuse for you to use so that you can smoke in the high school bathroom with the cool kids and listen to Led Zeppelin. It's a reason for you to evangelize those people. That's what its purpose was in Scripture. But of course, Kevin Max wants to rip the actions of Jesus out of the context of his larger ministry. And then he says that Jesus, quote, wasn't American and never spoke English, end quote. I can honestly say that I have never come across a person who legitimately believes that Jesus was an all-American boy who ate apple pie and rooted for the Yankees. If you know someone like that, feel free to correct them. But in any case, the post goes on, saying that Jesus, quote, was anti-wealth. But I can tell you emphatically that Jesus was not anti-wealth. This is completely false. Yes, Jesus himself lived a fairly modest life of pilgrimage, Matthew 8, 20. And yes, most of Jesus' disciples did not have physical fortunes of any kind. That's also true. Jesus consistently warns rich people and even said in Matthew 6, 24, quote, you cannot serve God and money, end quote. But Jesus was not anti-money. That's not the same thing. There is no passage that says that. Jesus was simply against the idolatrous love of money over the love of God. He was against any level of desire for money that blinded you spiritually. 1 Timothy 6.17 says, quote, As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. End quote. It is notable, though, that in this passage, the rich people in the church are not told to stop being rich. No, they are told to stop being arrogant and to not put their certainty in riches. The passage does not condemn the rich people in the church, but rather it tells them to bring their richness under the same lordship of Christ and his word that they have entrusted their souls to. To say as an overarching statement, then, that Jesus was some anti-wealth person, that's a blatant, unbiblical falsehood. But the post goes on. It says that Jesus was, quote, an anti-death penalty person. This, again, is incredibly misleading. I suppose they are coming to this conclusion on the basis of the account of the woman caught in adultery in John chapter 8. That's usually where people get this view from. It's in this chapter that Jesus says this, quote, Let him who is without sin among you throw the first stone at her, end quote. This has become a very famous passage. Many people have taken this to be a blanket condemnation of the death penalty. But that is not the case. You see, if Jesus was anti-death penalty, then why would Jesus' own apostle, his messenger, Paul, endorse the death penalty in Scripture? Did Jesus command his apostles to teach things that he would not teach? Would the Spirit of God, who inspires the writers of Scripture, tell them to contradict the teaching of Jesus, the Son of God? Of course not. And in Romans 13, 4, Paul writes this, quote, But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he, the governing authority, is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer, end quote. So here's a question. What exactly does Paul talk about the sword here for? When Paul says that the governing authority has the responsibility to bear the sword in punishing evildoers, that doesn't mean that they're going to use the sword to slap people on the wrist. Obviously, this is talking about the death penalty. It's talking about violent force. But more than this, he says that the government bearing the deadly sword is the instrument of God's own wrath on evildoers. Therefore, there is no biblical argument to be made that the Bible condemns the death penalty. In fact, the Bible directly commands that any truly ethical political authority must appropriately use the death penalty. There are many things that Jesus could be saying in John 8, and that could be a great topic for another video. But whatever he is saying, it is most certainly not an outright condemnation of the death penalty. That would put Jesus at odds with his own word. And Jesus himself said in Matthew 4, 4, quote, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God, end quote. So this attempt on behalf of Kevin Mack's former member of DC Talk is spreading false teaching about Christ. It is clearly an attempt to align Jesus with modern left-wing political ideology. The only problem is that, of course, you have to manipulate the life of Jesus and the sayings of Jesus beyond belief to reach that conclusion. 
there are several more important issues that need to be discussed here, so we will be putting out a part two video on this topic, and in that video we will revisit the rest of Kevin's claims. This will include topics like killing babies in the womb, birth control, tax cuts, poverty, etc. You do not want to miss it, so stay tuned for part two. And please know this, I do not offer any of this correction from a high and mighty position. I am nothing but a wretched sinner saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. So let's pray for Kevin Max that he would stop this falsehood by God's grace and turn to the truth of God's word. Thank you so much for watching that video. Please give us a like and subscribe so that you don't miss any content. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Rumble channel as well, just in case YouTube ever takes us down. The link is in the description. And before you go, take a look at this list here. These are the people who make all of the free content you see on this channel possible with their monthly support. Today's highlighted channel supporter is Lori G. If you also want to help and become part of the solution today, hit the link in the description. Every little bit keeps us independent and helps us immensely here on the channel. So I hope you'll consider joining the Truth Army today, and until next time, fight for truth, never surrender, and keep your eyes open. Thank you, and God bless.